Hey ladies and gents, BQ here. Happy Saturday morning. Before I get into the topic of the day, please hit subscribe. I do review Impact Wrestling each week on the King of the Mountain podcast in a very positive light. So if this is something that sounds good to you and you're listening to me for the first time, please hit that subscribe button. I would appreciate it greatly as I'm on my way to 500 subscribers. So topic of the day, I wasn't going to get on here and uh, talk about anything, but some stuff was brought to my attention and I really wanted to put it out there because yesterday I dropped a video regarding uh, the, the pay or the um, structured contracts for the Global Force Wrestling talent because... Melter, of course, put the news out there that, oh, well, they're giving up 10%. Um, they're not getting merchandise fees and it's uh, excessive and, you know, basically acting like the company is blackballing the wrestlers. So I did a video yesterday and I put the disclaimer out there, as I always try to, that, uh, you know, part of what I said was common knowledge, but some was also opinion. And but I, I do feel feel like I use common sense when I make my opinions too. I but I never try to act like a know it all. But a reason I wanted to do this video is because I did get some updates on how these talent contracts are structured. Now I don't want to drop my source because uh, out of respect for privacy, you know, it's an individual that uh, I've gone back and forth with uh, on Facebook a little bit in uh, forums and everything very knowledgeable fan very passionate guy very level-headed guy and uh, he he does have a hookup where he was able to get this information I don't want to disclose that because uh, I don't want to get him in trouble basically you know it's one thing to speak uh, amongst a few people on Facebook but then there's um, there's also going on social you know on uh, social platforms and you know something like YouTube and putting someone's name out there and sources out there and and all that but I just want to make it clear this is not uh, me digging this is I'm not uh, taking credit for the information that I'm about to share so talent contracts the whole 10% thing yes it has been put out there and it's been happening for a while this is if you remember one of the reasons the Hardys or Matt in particular really flipped out now GFW is in charge of the booking. They do try to place them in the best possible places or book them in the best possible promotions. What they don't tell you is that the company is also covering the talent's travel. Uh, that's outside of 200 miles. Their travel and their uh, lodging in exchange for that 10%. So... I'm not an expert here because I'm not this is not coming from the wrestler's mouth necessarily, but I'm not an expert, but it sounds to me as if the wrestler's not actually losing money in many cases when it comes to that. You're kind of trading that 10% for um for covering the lodging and the travel. To me that I, if I'm using some common sense, this is a tax write-off that the company can use at the end of the year in exchange for some financial compensation during the year. Also, if you guys have watched, uh, I know they kind of took it off YouTube, the um, with this ring with Madison Rain and Josh. You know, there was a portion where they always said, you know, you can catch the stars and knockouts at these local indie promotions. And they would list, you know, okay, this weekend, Caleb Conley is going to be here. Um, James Storm is going to be here, da 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 da. And actually, it um, did go to an independent show one time because there was one that turned out being an hour and a half local from me. It was a benefit show, and James Storm was there. So, you know, if it weren't for that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even have, no, you know, known to go and take my family and be a paying customer. So, I guess what's expected at the top of the year. Uh, 2018 is that they're going to go a little bit harder in promoting these independent shows. So if they're booking James Storm here, they're booking EC3 here, they're booking LAX here, they're going to make it a lot more known, whether it's on TV or YouTube, but it's going to be a harder push. Hey, you can catch these talents here. So it's actually beneficial for the wrestlers who can go to these shows and possibly sell more merchandise, you know, if they can get more people there. 
and it's beneficial for the promotions as well. So it's actually a win-win for everybody. Now regarding the merchandise, this was one I was, I was kind of far off on. It is true that they don't get a cut of the, of the uh, merchandise, but they do get financial compensation. So the wrestler's talent contract, we're going to say EC3, for instance, that is written in his contract as a top guy. We will put out one shirt or two shirts of yours this year. They negotiate a deal and EC3 says, okay, I want, I'm just throwing a number out there. Okay. I want a compensation of $40,000. All right. Boom. He is paid and the company continues to put out the merchandise, make the merchandise, and then they keep whatever they make from it. What this does is this eliminates royalties, which has always been an issue with the way their talent contracts have been structured in the past with the pay, with pay being laid and all that. Now the wrestler receives like a lump sum, so to speak, and they don't have to worry about the royalties and everything that comes with that, which make things more difficult. So once the shirt comes out, you know, they'll Alberto El Patron CCC shirt, they've given him a lump sum of financial compensation. And now with every sale that comes in, now that goes towards the company. And depending on where your spot is in the, in the, the roster. So if you're a top guy, you're a mid guy, you know, it's going to be in your contract. Okay. You will get a shirt come out this year. Or you'll get two shirts come out or whatever it is. All right. So I hope that does clear it up. I probably didn't deliver all that in the clearest uh, form. It is early for me. Um, even though it's 3 p.m., I am a day sleeper, so I just kind of woke up a little while ago. So I probably didn't deliver that as clear as I would have liked, but that's what you get from me. So <laughs> subscribe, and uh, we'll be talking about Impact Wrestling soon. Peace.